Welcome to another video. This is a video about the C64 video announcement board that I wanted to make for a very long time. I have made the board a long time ago. I have some experience with it, so I would like to share. So this is a really nice project that I've been actually waiting for a while to do. So the main idea behind making this project is that the Luma and Chroma are very noisy. And the Chroma is difficult to convert to RGB, so the C64 video enhancement board produces component Y, PB and PR video based on the data access that the VIC-2 generates. The VIC-2 has low video quality, the Luma and Chroma are noisy and Chroma is difficult to convert to RGB. So what do we do instead? Instead of cleaning up the video signals, the Chroma and Luma is bypassed. So to build this thing you really just need to order these two boards and a mouser boom project is all there by Bodget. He made a ready to use. But uh, you will have to source this uh, TRS, TRRRS connector and USB blaster. This is a cheap one I got off of eBay. It's just works rather nice and uh, flat flex cable that's okay so basically it another question I had when I started this was uh, how do you know if it fits the C64C or the or the bread bin well he has uh, doubled up with the connectors hairs so that goes down to the C64 motherboard and um, what you do is uh, for the C64C you use these two and for the uh, bread bin you use the other ones. And then there's a uh, ground around here you have to connect down to the uh, modulator area on the motherboard. Alright, so let's look at what we see here. We have the FPGA of course. We have amplifiers. One here and one here. We have voltage regulators. One on the analog side, which is hair. We can have a quick look at that actually. It has a split ground going here. So I think the aim is to keep the digital on the digital and F uh, analog on the analog side. So any currents going. So what more do we see? We see a switch on top. So, and we have the connector that goes into the adapter board. To read all the digital signals. So when we talk about bypassing the video by the way, if you look down here we can see that the video from the original week still comes into this board. It's conditioned, made into composite by the way, and then amplified and out to the motherboard again. And then it runs up to the AV port. So you can connect your old monitor still with using the board, this board, because you don't, you don't miss anything when you use this board. This design creates the component video from the digital signals by bypassing the analog signals. The design doesn't try to fix the poor Luma in any way, it just creates its own. So in component there's actually a Luma signal and uh, the funny thing here is that uh, if you if you take these signals which are here and and then replace the luma with this luma do you think it will work is there any lag <laughs> there's no lag at all actually it's one to one with the cpu clock so uh, actually the dot clock also we'll come back to that so this one doesn't have any lag so that's really cool Anyway, we have a resistor ladder digital to analog converter, goes into an amplifier, blah blah blah, out to the port here, so. And when you program it, you connect your JTAG here. Actually, I made a mistake in the beginning. I uh, connected the ground here and the JTAG here, and it wasn't connected to the C64, so I powered it manually. Somehow I put the 5 volt somewhere, I don't remember where. So, <laughs> it didn't program. Uh, the point is that uh, we have this ground split. If you're going to program outside the machine, I, I strongly suggest to connect these together, at least connect your ground up here. 
because I had a floating ground, so I had really strange voltages, negative voltages. The FPGA board has an adapter that goes under the VIC-2 to sniff data access generated by the VIC. It is enough to look at 22 signals to figure out what the VIC-2 intend to output as video. The enhancement board also provides original Luma, Chroma and Composite to the AV port. So let's have a look at the um, illustrations for this. So if you look at the original ones, you see that the Luma and Chroma comes from the ship. It has some composite conversion, which goes off to the RF section, and also the composite amplifier. And Luma and Chroma is basically just amplified and put out on the AV port. To realize this, there are two PCBs, an adapter that goes under the VIC-2 where some signals are tapped off and it level shifts into the bus transceivers. A flat flex cable, which is a system bus, and then the video announcement board with its FPGA, video buffer is a, and resistor ladder DAC. So you can see that similarity, except that there's no RF and we have the FPGA making the component. If you have any questions about this project, I suggest you find or create an issue in the project's GitHub repository. Remember that you can find older issues in the closed section. You can still ask in the closed issues too. So let's have a look at my build. You may already have noticed in my videos that my C64 is already modded with the video enhancement board. The video where I soldered the 144 pin TQFP was this board. I wanted that video to be more about my new microscope. The build went well. I soldered 144 pins the wrong way. The crystal the wrong way. <laughs> it didn't show in the soldering video, but I had to unsolder the device. And I had to really crank up the heat to get the IC off the board. I found out the problem though. My microscope bed is a large block of aluminium sucking out the heat from the board. So insulating the board helped the solder. The other interesting effect of soldering the crystal the wrong way. There was no picture of course, but I got some help from Disaster on GitHub suggested to try the pattern generator firmwares. When viewing on scope the video signal was about a thousand times slower. Not sure why. I think maybe the PLL runs a bit slow, not sure. This is a problem I have had with the KiCad lately, in other projects also, and this is the footprints. The TQFB package got soldered correctly, and a good microscope is necessary if you're dealing with a pin pitch below one millimeter. In this case, it was uh, half a millimeter. The adapter board was also interesting in the way the pass-through worked. The socket had long legs that act as a socket and a pin header in one. Perfect for those pass-through connections. I'd like to thank Bodget on GitHub for making his mouse project boom available. It was almost a matter of entering one and proceed to check. Then I also noticed that, oh shit! I have ordered 1.6mm PCB thickness and not the suggested 0.8. It turned out great though actually, using the longer pins together with the 1.6mm PCB. The cable assembly is three RCA connectors and a TRRS jack plug. I made an adapter, I used the standard RCA cables which is not ideal but will work for now. So what is the background of this board? Well, it's not the first board actually. Copper Dragon has also before made a A video board. It is also a component video module intended for vintage computers. It has made it work with the C64, ZX Spectrum and Atari. It's quite impressive if you ask me. There's a common misconception when it comes to FPGA. So people are talking about emulation and uh, one-to-one -one cycle exact and stuff like that. Well, actually that's true. 
but it's still emulation. It's not um, a hardware representation exact. Well, it's cycle exact. It's not hardware exact. So, so the FPGA emulates some of the inner workings of the VIC-2. It does not completely replace it also. So be aware of that. You can't just put in the device and uh, re remove the VIC chip. The VIC-2 is also a timing generator producing DRAM refresh, bus available, AEC and other signals. It knows what to ask for and when to ask for it. When to get characters and color, when to fetch sprites. A full emulation is possible but it's not the aim of this design. Currently there are no FPGA VIC-2 drop-in ports yet that I know of. I see this as a step in that direction. Currently there are no FPGA VIC-2 drop-in boards yet that I know of. I see this as a step in that direction, an open project, a platform to get it going with FPGA development of the VIC-2. This was one of the first things that I thought about. The project is certainly a fresh breath though, if uh, I don't know what the breath is of dragons anyway. I don't know the author very well. I asked them though. Copper Dragon is a software engineer with interest in hardware and retro computing. The firmware is currently still in development. Copper Dragon has released new firmware based on feedback. Demo coders do many weird things and there are many corner cases. I asked him how he debugs and develops the emulation. It is by trial and error and he refers to the famous VIC-2 timing TXT. Winwise emulator test bench programs he uses demos to confirm the working. There are a few guys testing and reporting bugs in the GitHub issues section. So I suggest you look there. It's actually quite interesting to follow. So one demo he has looked at or someone has looked at was the Edge of Disgrace. I think it was disaster. And uh, the side border demos, some sprites on the side was incorrectly displayed. And uh, I think it was a matter of figuring out where the first pixel starts in the counters. So I'm not completely sure how he fixed that, but it does work now. And you have Gianna's sisters had a problem with the time display. And other times the problem has been timing related. All of this has been fixed though. So. It's getting very, very close. So let's dive into the emulation part. How does it work? Let's not look so close at the VHDL code though, because it's most of my viewers don't understand it. So I think it's more easier if I talk about it. But anyway, the firmware takes care of timing, sniffing the VIC-2 data access, emulation of the video signal, the VIC-2 asks for data in a fixed sequence and then I'm talking about the original one and for the emulator in the FPGA to know what is what it will look for a DRAM refresh pattern to sync itself up to the VIC-2. This is done to make sense of the data sniffed and to find the first scan line. He says that he uses the CPU clock. That is the 1 MHz clock that is pixel clock divided by 8. The pixel clock has an uneven and unstable duty cycle. However, when divided, it is stable. Therefore, he generates his own pixel clock, divides the 1 MHz signal into 16 phases. It's a bit more complicated than that also. The FPGA has a programmable PLL and that is set to give a frequency compatible with PAL. And I can't see any noise on it, or at least from a meter from the screen. I have a 24 inch LG screen, which is beautiful by the way, because it has myriad of connections. Anyway, I do see some very, very faint noise on my TV. If I put my face up in it, it will probably be lost in the YouTube upload of this video as per usual. The same happened when I did the stripe fix boards. I'll try film it. It is nothing like the original Victor Luminoise with gel bars or anything. Those are completely gone. I'd say it's perfect as far as analog video goes. When it comes to color representation, they are 
at least on my TV, much more vibrant. So let's talk a little bit about that. The color palette in the firmware 2.0, it is possible to write to 256 16-bit registers to hold palette information. The way it works is like this. First an access is made to unlock the registers. Then you write to the high and low byte address. And then you can store them permanently. In an experimental version of the firmware, a second bank of color registers has been implemented to allow different colors on odd and even lines. So anyway, there's this guy Hojo Nora. You can also find him on Lemon64, he's also on GitHub. He's working on a C64 tool to program the color palette and uh, implement, implementing the so-called color door algorithm. So this is a work in progress. So the question now is, should you get one? At the current moment, I don't know if anyone is building it for other people. The sign is open for those who have ability to build it themselves. It might actually come into VGP, you know, the video game perfection website. If you can uh, persuade the guy to make them and sell them, anyway. Um, I have seen on Lemon64, there's a forum thread there you can follow. Also, the, at this time, I would be wise to own a USB blaster to be able to program the FPGA to be able to enjoy the future.